Peter Cook and Terry Duckett. The first race on the program, Gregarious, the winner here, ridden by Johnny Marshall, starting the favourite at 2-1, to one, finishing powerfully over the final stages, a little too good for JT, and Royal Hamlet finishes third. ...only narrowly from Duke Diamond, in third place, Star of Kingston, as they turn for home, over on the fence behind those, JT, and then Prince Zero, and Gregarious is now trying to push his way into the clear. In the straight, 300 metres out, Duke Diamond went to the lead, JT getting a split near the inside, Star of Kingston joining in, Gregarious is now shouldering his way into the clear, and he's coming home hard, JT the leader, but Gregarious has grabbed him on the outside. He's pretty green, Gregarious, but he's a good cult as he charges at JT, and Gregarious did best and won brilliantly. Gregarious beat JT, third Royal Hamlet, fourth Sky Sheriff. A good the run. second event, and the winner here was Claire Apollo, another winner to Johnny Marshall and Bart Cummings. Claire Apollo starting the favourite at 5-4, to four, beating Avon's time, and St. Ed finishes third. For love, Royal Corno and Century Blaze at the head of the others, but around the turn, and Persian Vane is just about collared by Claire. Apollo, Avon's time in third place and then playing our song and Space Vision the top weight Saint Ed on the outside running on well but it's taking her a long while to get going, Clear Apollo with great acceleration, scooted away at the 200 mark and she's got them struggling, Avon's time and Saint Ed making little headway at the moment and it's another one coming up for Clear Apollo, she's going to make it a hat trick of wins and this impressive filly getting a little bit weary close to home but easily holds them out to win from Avon's time, Saint Ed is third, then food for love. And the third event and the first leg of a double for Peter Cook when Flighty Girl was successful. She started the favourite Flighty Girl at 5-2. to two. Pretty fine second, Lilac time third. Others as they come to the turn, Parla Yuba, and then Lilac Time, followed by White Takaruru and Princess Bibi. Heads a turn for home now. Pretty Pine is the leader, Flighty Girl in hot pursuit. Bachetta's in third place, followed by Jump Ahoy, then Parla Yuba and Gletchen, who's struggling. At the 200, Pretty Pine is clear. One danger at this stage, Flighty Girl, who's trying hard to get on terms with the leader. Pretty Pine is still in front with 100 left to go. Flighty Girl on the outside is finishing doggedly. Flighty Girl is starting to run home over the top of Pretty Pine. Flighty girl coming home far the better she's a very good filly flighty girl came away to beat pretty pine third i'd say lilac time just in front of bachetta then race four and the winner here was christian prince another winner to marshall Christian Prince just a little too good for Conqueror. Conqueror comes home very strongly at the end. The disappointment here was the favourite Lord of Persia. It's him in about fifth place on the rails as they come to the corner. Hard ridden and drops out of it over the final stages. And Conqueror spotting them a very big start as they turn for home. In the straight past the 400 and Tandrio and McGlinchey are the two leaders. Or Tandrio ducked off the track. Hampered Haddington whose rider had to change course. Christian Prince joining in on the outside and then Purple Edition and Caviar Girl and Conqueror. At the 200 Tandrio just the leader from McGlinchey. Christian Prince pounces on them. Conqueror wide out is flying home now. Christian Prince in front. Conqueror picking him up at the post is too close. And Christian Prince wins at a length and a quarter to Conqueror. Tandrio third race very erratically in the straight. Race five of the winner was Pagma Mahal. Beautifully ridden by Terry Duckett. Just off the speed coming to the corner. Uh, gets clear at the right time. Goes around in luck. Shoots to the front and goes away to win easily. Red nose second. Secret star third. In luck the favourite at two to one. And drops right out of it to finish next to last. But he is in a pocket now as they come around the turn. Duckett trying to push his way into the clear. Red Nose made the turn about four deep. And then Oz Meridium into the straight. In luck as the leader. Pag Mahal is closing on him quickly. In third place, Grey Rhapsody. And then Secret Star and old Red Nose coming home well. At the 200 though. And Pag Mahal gave him the go by. Pag Mahal race clear. Red Nose getting to second on the outside. But Pag Mahal shot away. And his four wins straight coming up. And by golly, he was going to win a long, long way from home. Pag Mama Hull sprinted away to beat Red Nose. Third, Secret Star. Fourth is more. Race six, the missile stakes, and the winner here was Nordic Prince having his first run back from a break. He started at eight to one and was too good for Flash Doll and Latin Saint. Beans was the favourite. She led early. She uh, started at six to four and disappointed over the final part. Jewel and Bow Dusty last as they turn for home. Into the straight now. Beans with the inside running lead. Luskin's touch scrambled on the turn and Flash Doll is able to get a split between them. Nordic Prince is running a bit of a race on the outside where Flash Doll had darted through in the centre and dashed to the lead. But here comes Nordic Prince. Nordic Prince is coming after Flash Doll. Terry Duckett hard at work on Nordic Prince. The flashy chestnut takes the lead. Flash Doll is kicking again, but Nordic Prince wants to hang in a bit, but he's drawing away to win brilliantly. Nordic Prince at his first start since the Doncaster beat Flash Doll. Third Latin Saint, he found it too short. Race seven, a tricky finish here. A finish that tricked almost everyone with Noble Connection beating Entry. Entry was the favourite. Johnny Marshall was on this horse. Would have made it four for the day. He started the favourite at four to one. Have a look at the finish of it, and uh, I think you'll agree. It does look as though Entry had just lasted. 
Again, forced made the bend about four deep and back behind those looking for a run as they straighten for home as Flying Cinders and Noble Connection trying to bullock his way through in the centre. He's into the clear now. Cabramatta Jack went to the lead coming to the 200 over Kids Beer. Entry and further out Noble Connection coming after these leaders. Noble Connection and entry have gone to Cabramatta Jack. Noble Connection and entry are going to fight it out. Entry in front. Noble Connection lunging at him on the outside. They come to the line locked together. Photo. I think entry. Entry I think has lasted to win by a whisk at a noble connection. They streeted the others, thirds of photo. Now to the last race of the day, an exclusive planner getting a pretty good run close to the rails, one off the rails, in fact, with about 100 metres to go, burst through to pick them up. The fun of it looks shorter when with 100 metres to go, but couldn't hold off exclusive planner. Then Nyambun, exclusive planner, followed by Neard, who's hugging the inside rail. Around the turn, Dashing Saltaire led over Royal Captive. Dashing Saltaire left the fence. There's a split coming now for Nyambun. Lord Avon is joining in on the outside and behind those, the fun of it, who can't get clear in the straight now. Many chances. Lord Avon battling it out with Nayambin and Dashing Saltaire. Now the fun of it is starting to fly down the outside. The fun of it finishing brilliantly. The fun of it charging at Lord Avon. Exclusive Planet got right through on the inside rail. Horses all over the place, but Exclusive Planet bursts through and wins from either the fun of it or Lord Avon. Near this close now the TAB information from the meeting yesterday at Rose Hill. Winning combination there, 455. Christian Prince, Pagma Mahal and Nordic Prince, the double, $22.20 and the treble, $252.40. That was Sidnacki and beating the favourite, Get the Red, who started at 5-2 to two, and Castle Glen finishes third at 11-2. to two. Here's the replay coming up now. I don't know what the boy was doing on the outside of him on Castle Glen. Uh, didn't appreciate him doing that. He's back as I think. Now he's gone to the inside. Joins work to win at the second last. Two to vacuum and then three to get the rent. Castle Glen now in front. Work to win has surrendered, but vacuum the danger's gone up a length and a half second and quickly coming after Castle Glen. Work to win, weakening third and get the rent running on. Vacuum went up the join Castle Glen on the turn with one to jump, two lengths to get the rent. The others can't win. It's vacuum taking a narrow lead now from uh, Castle Glen. Get the rent pull to the outsides, coming home well. Vacuum got clear at the last, a length and a half. Get the rent the outside. No, he bungled it. Get the rent and vacuum will win. Vacuum draws away and wins by about two and a half or three lengths. Second placing to get the rent. Third castle, Glen. About the second event and the winner here was Ascot who had to go very wide coming to the corner. It's a grey horse looming up out deep on the track, Ascot. But he goes on with the job over the final part to beat Noble Falcon and great actor finishes third. Coming into it, Zarina Rose is beaten. Pride of Oak Hill's under pressure and coming home fairly well, Corrie's yacht. On the turn, Noble Falcon took a narrow lead, but Ascot's coming at it quickly on the outside, the grey. It's doing better than them, and on the inside, Scorpio Prince. I don't think Corrie's yacht can go on with great actor and Niagara star. Ascot, the grey, drew clear a half-length to Noble Falcon in the straight. He's drifting off the track, but Ascot's got it won. And Ascot's going to be a tonic for Zamora's Nathan. Ascot out wide, wins by about three parts or half a length to Noble Falcon. Six lengths away, third great actor from Corrie's yacht, Scorpio. The third event, the Hiskin Steeple, and the winner was Airmon. He led most of the way. Airmon started at 11 to 4 and beat Light Horse and Samoy finishes third. Mountain Gold, the unplaced favourite, 9 to 4. Airmon landed two and a half in front of Light Horse. Three away then, Miss Emma, Samoy, Mountain Gold. But on the turn, 400 to go. Airmon is three lengths in front in the Hiskins. One fence to jump, 300 metres to go, and he's holding them. The boys hard at him. Light Horse, two behind him. Airmon made the turn badly. Then Samoy, Airmon a length and a half in front, coming to the last. If he jumps it well, he'll win. Airmon draws to it. Oh, he hit it. So did Light Horse, though. And Airmon's going to win the Hiskins. Leads all the way. Great win. Airmon by two lengths. Second Light Horse, a nick away third, Samoy. Fourth, Miss Emma. Race four, and the winner was Bo Stoney, starting at 20 to 1, beating Mary Starr, and Fresh Snart finishes third. Uh, the favourite here, Prince Tame, very heavily back, 7 to 2 into 7 to 4. Raced up close to the lead to the corner and then weakened right out of it. Making a run from Needless. Royal Crest looking for a run from Bostani and then Advance Party. Fresh start just led again about a half length at the 300 from Apatito and Mersey Star looking a big threat out wide. And Bostani starting to get a run and come into the picture quickly. On the turn, Fresh start just led Mersey Star with Apatito and out wide on the track, Bostani. It's Fresh start just in front, Mersey Star and now Bostani. Mersey Star got the head in front, but Bostani's coming over the top of a lot of them out wide. It'll just get up, I reckon. Bostani won it ahead. Mersey Star second, a half head to Fresh Start third. Four lengths to Race five, and the winner was Bold Jet. He was parked up behind them, coming to the corner. 
was in desperate need of a, a run in the straight. The run uh, came and he got up to win, beating King of the Stars and Segovian Rhythm, the favourite, finishing 30. Looked home on the corner, Segovian Rhythm, when he kicked away. Head in front, Glenson hard ridden. King of the Stars making a big run, four deep. Gleaming Waters looking for a run. Bulget struggling, Mum's Pride next, and then Nordica. Segovian Rhythm just led on the turn from King's Image. King of the Stars and Glenson out wider from Gleaming Waters, but Segovian Rhythm gave them the slip. He dashed away two in front from King's Image and King of the Stars. He's had to go for the whip on Segovian Rhythm. King of the Stars, the old blokes coming at him quickly. Segovian Rhythm stopping. Bulget getting up in the centre. Bulget's flying. Oh, Bulget, I reckon, a nose. I reckon Bulget, a nostril to King of the Stars and a nostril away third, Segovian Rhythm. Race six and the winner here was Painted Version, beating uh, Rymick Bay and third in was uh, Fearless Host. That's uh, the, uh, the winner in third place on the fence, the grey horses. They come towards the home turn, finishes a little too strongly for Rymick Bay. Pretty well with 300 to go. One coming quickly round the outside now as Fearless Host and Painted Version's got the split in the centre from Supreme Spring Boulevard Boy. Politico under the whip next from Red Vane and Figaro, but Painted Version has bolted. It went up quickly to join Rymick Bay and they've shot three lengths in front of the rest of the field. Rymick Bay fighting back, Painted Version the outsider, neck in front of Rymick Bay with 100 to go and is doing a bit better. Well back third, Fearless Host and Painted Version's coming on to win. About a half length to Rymick Bay, four lengths away, Fearless Host from Star No. Then came... Race seven and the winner here was Arctic Eclipse beating Raw Ricky Rose. Gee, it uh, was something beating Raw Ricky Rose. There was a fall about six furlongs out. And Raw Ricky Rose lost about ten lengths and then comes up about eight, nine horses wide on the home turn. He was beaten in a photo. Should have won pretty easily, Raw Ricky Rose. ...trying to get up on the fence. Uh, they're getting squeezed for room, however. And then Raw Ricky Rose, Society Man, the outside, Stainford the centre. Over on the inside of them is Arcolette under pressure. And uh, coming around them now, Evening Mist with Raw Ricky Rose. Society Man and Stainford just in front into the straight. Arcolette still there. The three of them in line halfway down the straight with Arctic Eclipse battling on on the inside. And coming at them, Raw Ricky Rose. Arctic Eclipse took the lead near the line and Arctic Eclipse has won it from Raw Ricky Rose, Society Man and those third from Stainford. Race 8 and the Boulder gets up here, Touch of Rainbow starting at 66 to 1. This is a big finish with only noses separating them at the end. Chesterfield second, Royal Asset third. Uh, out on the track now, Island Pride and Polar Air pushing through very fast from Manoroa and Chesterfield making its run. It's Polar Air taking a narrow lead as they came to the turn into the straight. There's many chances in it, however. Fighting back is Benton Boy on the inside. Crown Man looking for a run. Island Pride can't go on with it. It's about four in line, and here a run coming on the inside. Corabo's getting through. Chesterfield now winding up on the outside. Uh, anybody's race near the line. Touch a rainbow on nose in front. I reckon touch a rainbow. A nose to Royal Asset and a nose to Chesterfield. A half and a tight finish on the outside of the 66 to 1 outside. A touch a rainbow getting the decision. Now the TAB information. The winning combination 10 1 11 Bostani, Bolt Jet, Arctic Eclipse, the double paid $160.15 and the treble $4,762.60. That was Mooney Valley back with David Rocky in Sydney last year and he kicked home a winning double yesterday at Warwick Farm and uh, a couple of nice rides too. Northern Reward, he was trapped out a little wide on him but he got him to respond in the straight and he went to the line well. The San Domenico Stakes was the feature race on the program and it was won by Rose Brook. Now this filly was very impressive yesterday giving them a long start and rattling home at the end. The first event of the day, and the winner was El Zam beating Gold Tanzor, and Dicey finishes third. Dicey was the favourite at 10 to 9. Raced in the box seat, coming to the corner, loomed up as a chance just as they straightened up, but then weakened on the run, and El Zam and Gold Tanzor are a little too good for the favourite. Two turn the tables, and at the head of the others, Salmanor into the straight, and Dicey's out after Gold Tanzor. Draws level Dicey with Gold Tanzor, El Zam coming at the pair of them. A length into Sarah Ramey, followed by turn the tables. Gold Tanzor fighting back a hard. Dicey, All Zam coming at them and two turn the tables. Gold Tanzor the inside and All Zam. It's Gold Tanzor, All Zam. All Zam goes the better and All Zam's got up on the line to beat to Gold Tanzor, I feel. Third was Dicey. The second event of the day and the winner here was Reflect. It's a nice run just after they straighten up to burst through and go to the lead. Zephyr Ty was well backed in the race but was trapped right off the track most of the way and uh, didn't really get a look in. This is the first of Quentin's double. 550 to go and O'Black just leading Lady Courageous. A length and a half away in third position as Hope to come, followed on the outside by Bally Sound. Wider out Mogarica, then comes Lloydsville on the rail. Zephyr Ty's never been on the track and Reflect back behind that lot as they straighten up. He's getting a run through Reflect very quickly now and he's charging out after 
up to Lady Courageous and in the twinkling of an eye, Reflect takes over from Lady Courageous. On the outside, Imperial Rain is running on, but all too late, and it's all Reflect. Reflect bounding away from Imperial Rain and the Lady Courageous, and Reflect wins well. Imperial Rain second, Lady Courageous third. The third event, the Garçon Welder, the winner was under orders beating Oz Meridian and Lord Avon. He was the favourite Lord Avon. He had a beautiful run, looked a certainty in the, uh, in the run, but couldn't hold off both Oz Meridian and under orders. Under orders finishing brilliantly in the last uh, 50 or 60 metres. Carl's given Oz Meridian a good run. He's a length away third and now pulling around the heels of the leaders. And as they straighten up for the run of the judge, goodbye sailors history, Lord Avon's taken over. Oz Meridian endeavouring to go with Lord Avon. Goodbye sailor third and two further back under Orders followed by Zing along. Lord Avon under the whip taken on by Osmeridium. Under orders starting to rattle home. Osmeridium, Lord Avon, under orders on the outside, swapping his rivals. And under orders gets up to beat Osmeridium and Lord Avon. San Domenico Stakes and Rosebrook finishing brilliantly. As I mentioned before, this race was running very fast time. Regal Carrioy made most of the speed out in front, 57.7, a new record. And Rosebrook coming home with that uh, flashing run at the end, too strong for Regal Carrioy. Sounds of morning third. I like diamonds, none carry. Foreign diplomat second last and kindly thought is last as they swing around the corner. And Regal Carrioy shows the way, a length and a half hot opera, a length the sounds of morning. This trio well clear, about four lengths on B and two lengths further back, Rosebrook. Hot Opera's history and coming down to the 200. Regal Carrioy in front from Sounds of Morning, followed by Beans Hot Opera. Rosebrook the outside, Regal Carrioy the leader. Running on is Rosebrook, Regal Carrioy still in front. Rosebrook swapped her. Rosebrook got up to beat Regal Carrioy. By gee, what an effort. Then Sounds of Morning, Beans Hot Opera. Race five and the winner was Manuain starting the favourite at nine to four. He raced up fairly handy to the lead in about fourth place as they come to the corner and finishes well over the final stages. Dalmasia's run was quite good in third high classic. Two lengths, Bow Dusty yielding ground. Then Dalmasia, Riverdoor and Seed Trader last of all around the corner. At high classic kicked away here a length and a half. Manuan, Shiraco, King Rip and two Dalmasia coming to the 200. Manuan is going after high classic. Draws level, puts the body in front. Manuan, it's Manuan kicking clear a high classic. Shiraco's run a great race and so too Dalmasia. Dalmasia is going to get up for second. But Manuan wins nicely from Dalmasia. High classic and Shiraco's run fourth. Race six and the winner here was Northern Reward. He was trapped out a little wide in the early stages of the event, but uh, he was too strong for them over the final part with Quentin taking him to the lead just after they straightened up. Star Emerald second, Stanford third, Gregarious, the unplaced equal favourite at two to one. A length of Bell Taylor. Gregarious lost a little bit of ground when they sprinted up front from Star Emerald. And then Happy Halloween, two favoured man and two last is Regal Rora. Around the corner they sweep, chances galore here with Stanford in front. A half length Star Emerald getting up on the fence. Northern Reward is still battling on. Gregarious going up behind those three leaders. Then Happy Halloween and Peace Officer, but Northern Reward has taken a clear cut break. Gregarious can't win. Northern Reward streaking clear of Star Emerald, followed by Stanford and Peace Officer, but it's all Northern Reward. And Northern Reward wins at a length and a half to Star Emerald. Third Stanford, followed by Peace Officer. Race seven and the winner, Zar Royal. Garlic runs off the track rather badly in the straight. And Zara Royal was forced to go very wide when putting in his finishing run, but he comes brilliantly at the end. Gaelic second, neared third. Followed by Prince Granada, the fun of it. Then Zara Royal Papagano, neared life begins. A length tuna two, Bay Shaw, King Arthur and Favoloso around the corner. He's shifting to the middle of the track, Gaelic. He straightens up about the length clear. Symbolic star, the outside. Our Sierra Court battling on from the fun of it. Zara Royal, Prince Granada. Then neared life begins and tuna two. Gaelic's going to the outside fence. Zara Royal on the the outside coming at him, gains the lead and forges away Zar Royal from Gaelic and Neard and Zar Royal for the money. Zar Royal from Gaelic and Neard and then Tuna to The final event and the winner here was Luna Flame. Castletown started the favourite. He was having his first run back from a break. He showed plenty of pace to the corner. Weakens over the final stages but he's sure to be improved for that run. Paris Gold runs on OK to finish in second place but Luna Flame too strong for them. Is next around the corner is Castle Town's condition going to remain. They're coming at him. Paris Gold the middle, wider out. Luna Flame putting in his charge now. And behind those three horses, Gem Force and then Tandrio at the 200. And on the outside, Luna Flame has taken over clearly from Castle Town. And then Paris Gold and Tandrio from Sabre Tayeb. But Luna Flame is forging away. And Luna Flame raced home to beat Paris Gold and Castle Town. Then Tandrio, Gem Force, Sabre Tayeb, a good run from Fur.
Now let's check out the TAB information from the meeting yesterday in Sydney. 12-4-2 uh, and two the combination. Rose Brook, Manuan and Zara Royal. The Daily Double paid $16.85 and the Treble $155.95. That was Warwick Farr. We'll take a break and come back with more. Right. Right. beating right. Castle right. Glen and Run Sugar Big Bay. finishes third. Castle Glen is uh, struggling and then two to Lord Rocky Red. But Run Big and Eremophilia have got away with about 500 to go. They're about three lengths in front now. In third placing is Sugar Bag and then Lord Rocky Red and Castle Glen. Run Big might be going a bit better than Eremophilia who made the turn badly and facing up to the last. Run Big a narrow leader. Eremophilia coming at it again and then Castle Glen switched to the inside. Over the last, Eremophilia jumped it better than Run Big, got a neck in front. Castle Glen's got the rails run and then Lord Rocky Red but Eremophilia in front with 100 to go. Castle Glen on the inside, gradually pegging it back. Castle Glen and Eremophilia but Eremophilia just in front and one. Eremophilia about a half neck to Castle Glen. Two links to run big, Lord Rocky Red about five... Race two, and the winner here was Twilight Miss, starting at 10 to 1, beating My Julian conclusive. The favourite was Temptress. She was held up for a run in the straight, not a bad effort by Temptress, but Twilight Miss just a little too good. Twilight Miss the centre from sheer brilliance. Candle in the wind, hard ridden, and Temptress bullying it its way through the field. Into the straight with about 3.50 to go. And a vocal lady in front of half to My Julie. Here's Twilight Miss quickly grabbing them, and so is our Beryl. Temptress can't get through at the moment. Then came conclusive. It's my Julie and Twilight Miss from Temptress coming at them. My Julie under the whip ahead in front of Twilight Miss with a hundred to go. Twilight Miss draws level now. They're having a great battle to the line. Twilight Miss doing a little bit the better. And Twilight Miss won at a neck to My Julie. Conclusive probably got third just in front of Temptress. Reckon the third event of the winner here was Trigg starting at 8-1. to one. The favourite of Mr Place, Taj Ruler. But it was a pretty good run by Taj Ruler. Began well and then got shuffled back to nearly last. And uh, he took it about 10 wide on the corner. Made up good ground in the straight. I suggest you forget that run and keep following Taj Ruler. Tarwin Star and Sports Talk getting off the fence. Farago out wider. And uh, they were followed by Fighting Gem and Taj Ruler about 15 wide. Into the straight now and Trigger's got to the front after the slow beginning and has taken the lead. Mazorski pulled to the outsides out after it at the 200. It's Trigg in front. Mazorski coming at it. They're both under the whip and they're clear of the others. It's Trigg just in front. Mazorski coming home a bit the better. I don't think it'll get up. Trigg just the leader and Trigg's going to win it. By a neck to Mazorski, four lengths away third was powerful goal. Then Nicholas John successful in the next race, beating the favourite Crystal Dancer. Crystal Dancer protested. Um, there was a bit of a bump just after they straightened up, but I think the honours with Nicholas John because he wanted to hang in rather badly all the way down the straight. Nicholas John at eight to one, beating the favourite Crystal Dancer at four to one. Now with Tarara Prince, Nicholas John's gone up quickly to join them on the outside and the three in line as they turn for home. Nicholas John just the leader. Crystal Dancers fighting back on the inside, but Nicholas John's going better. Drew a length in front now from Crystal Dancer, well clear of Evening Mist and Tara Voss. It's Nicholas John clear with a hundred metres to go, holding Crystal Dancer at bay. And Nicholas John in the run of the post. He's got to keep him going, but he'll be just too strong. Weakening on the line, but Nicholas John won at a neck. Second Crystal Dancer, six lengths away as Evening Miss third. Then count... Race five and the winner was Prince Dalek. He was always up handy to the pace, Prince Dalek, and a little too good at the end for Bold Prospect. And Worry Symbol rattling home from a long way back on the corner to finish up in third spot. Value of asset next from Prince Delac, taken to the outside from Tower Bell, followed two lengths, Bowl Commodore, Black Mark, Powers Hope, Silver Bounty and Academy Lass. Around the turn, Atchar about a length and a half clear. In second, uh, placing Torbeck and now Bowl Prospect pulled to the outside, followed by Tower Bell. Torbeck got to the lead, Bowl Prospect grabbed it quickly, Prince Delac coming at Bowl Prospect, then Bowl Commodore, Academy Lass. Bowl Prospect and Prince Delac and Torbeck fighting it out. Wider out is Worry Symbol flashing home. Prince Delac got to the lead, close to the line, and Prince Delac's coming away. It wins second bowl prospect. Worry Symbol got up for third just in front of... Race six and the winner was Pochinella beating Hold Sam right on the line. A very good win too by Pochinella. The horse was turned sideways in the straight when looking for a run. And he came home very strongly over the final stages to pick up Hold Sam. Hold Sam was trapped very wide on the home turn. He looked as though he was going to win Hold Sam but just couldn't hold off Pochinella. They were followed a couple of lengths to Commando starting to run on and Vane Fox giving them a big start. Into the straight they race now and King Rhythm dashed away about two lengths in front. Coming after it is Practitioner with Wholesome on the outside. They were followed behind those horses, Noblest Roman. Vane Fox is running on but couldn't win. With about 200 to go and Wholesome took a narrow lead on the outside of King Rhythm. Pochinella's coming at them very quickly. Pochinella's finishing the best and Pochinella got up to win.
about a neck to wholesome King Rhythm third. The Targe flashed home for... Race seven, Mr. Independent successful here. Plenty of money for him too. Nine to four into seven to four. He was running about sixth on the corner, but he shouldered his way clear. Uh, got at them very quickly in the straight and raced away to win easily, beating planned escape and down a road. ...losing ground at this stage of the race and then came down a road. As they swing to the turn into the straight, there's many chances. Cloverbrook on the inside, outside it uh, there, to tackling it as Bread Eater. Fleet Dance going for the run with Touch of Rainbow and Planned Escape. And now Mr. Independent coming at them quickly. Mr. Independent's got to the lead at the 200 metre mark. Planned Escape's got into second placing and then came down the road. But Mr. Independent's bolted away and he's going to walk in Mr. Independent about two lengths. Planned Escape second, down the road's third. Then came Fleet Dance. Bay. Last race of the day, Common Star, the favourite uh, winning here. Our Rani Saab comes home very strongly at the end. Long way back on the corner, but makes up plenty of ground. Probably would have won uh, had the race been just a little further. Common Star, the winner at 13 to 4 in favourite. And they were followed uh, back behind those horses again by our Rani Saab and Shia Satin. Common Star went up with Dil Kusher to tackle Princess Vale three in line into the straight as they came to about the 200 metre mark now. And Dil Kusher, a narrow leader from Common Star, trying to get at the outside. Common Star and Dil Kusher going stride for stride. There's nothing between them. Dil Kusher, the rails. It's Common Star, the outside, going together from our Rani Saab. Common Star, a half hit in front. Dil Kusher coming at it again. Common Star in front and one. Common Star has won it about a neck, I suppose, to Dil Kusher. Our Rani Saab absolutely flew down the outside to be third. They now the TAB information from the meeting yesterday at Caulfield. Winning combination there in the treble. It was 1-7-1. and one. Nicholas John, Prince Dalek, Mr. Independent, $60.50 the treble and the double paid $8.95. That was the meeting yesterday in Melbourne. The extra double, 2-3, and three, paid Chanana, Common Star, $25.25. Back with David Wright. It was Bold Trio beating Bold Roller. And in the race was Dragnet. Dragnet starting the favourite at 2 to 1. Kenhurst Lad. And together again as last. 400 metres to go. Out on the inside, Fear or Favour and Battle Dance going together. Royal Hamlet making a line of three. Sonny went on the fence. Dragnet to the outside. Baron Kane looking for the run through. And then Bold Trio coming into it. At the 200 metres and wide out. Bold Trio after Fear or Favour. Dragnet the favourite under the whip. Royal Hamlet can't do any better from Baron Kane and Bold Roller. But it's Bold Trio starting to forge away he's too good and bold trio raced home to win from a tight finish involving bold roller and dragnet baron kane fourth then edge bast and royal hamlet race two and the winner here was biscadoe she runs on really well from a fair way back biscadoe giving the impression that she'll get a little bit more ground uh, Amuna Nee was the unplaced favourite here. She was very heavily backed, Amuna Nee. Raced in a prominent position at the corner, but weakened out of it over the final stage. That's Biscaloe, about six wide, coming around the bend with the purple colours on. A length and a half to perfect score to KO, followed by Amuna Nee. A length then to Biscaloe, followed by Caribbean Miss, and then the Andabelle. 200 to go. Pretty Pine put the half head in front now from White Ivy. Amuna Nee can't quite reach them at the moment and here is Biscalowie. Biscalowie moved up to Pretty Pine, takes the lead and Biscalowie coming away. White Wine running on, will get up for second but Biscalowie has beaten White Wine and Pretty Pine then Neanderbill Caribbean was followed by Antel and then Race 3 and the winner here was Artist Man he was heavily supported Artist Man he raced back in about sixth place coming to the home turn, but he finishes very strongly over the final stages, looming up to take the lead about the 200 metre mark and gets away from them over the final stages to win easily. Artist Man after Glenfield, lad, more mink can't get out. Artist Man takes over now. Artist Man a length in front from Red Nose, Glenfield, lad, and zing along, but Artist Man is forging away. And Artist Man beat Red Nose close between St. Et and the Glenfield, lad, on the inside, then zing along on the... Race four, and the winner was Paris Gold beating Cabra Matter Jack and Raya's son. The favourite here was Royal Equerry. He didn't have a great deal of luck, got bottled up on the rise and didn't really get a clear crack at the Royal Equerry. Started at 9 to 4. Paris Gold and Cabra Matajak fighting it out at the end with the honours just going to Paris Gold. Corner, straightens up, a length and a quarter, Shari Manu. And then Cabra Matajak followed by Paris Gold. Royal Equerry badly in need of a run. He can't find one little Pettiff. And as they come past the 100 craze history, Cabra Matajak's taken the lead from Paris Gold. Royal Equerry, Ryerson running home fast, but now it's Paris Gold racing up to Cabra Cabramatta Jack doing better, and Paris Gull got up to beat Cabramatta Jack. Third was Ryerson, followed home then by... The fourth event, the feature race of the day, the Premier Stakes, won by Latin Saint, beating uh, Razor Sharp, a very good run in this race by Brewery Boy. Makes up plenty of ground over the final stages, gets to the line really well. But Latin Saint, written by Malcolm Johnson, just a little too good for them. Razor Sharp, the favourite, starting at 5-4, and third in was Vivacity. 
And here's the replay now. Stakes and the American Thomas Sheck slow to go with Brewery Boy and Razor Sharp Best to begin from Latin Saint. Hunted along early. Three deep as Andretti, a length and a half Nordic Prince followed by Vivacity and then a gap to Captain Piper Gold Circle. A length for Loso and then Brewery Boy and a good margin just a dash and Thomas Sheck is absolute. Coming to the 800 metres, Latin Saint on the outside, a half length on Razor Sharp. Nearly two lengths away, third Andretti followed by Nordic Prince the outside and then a gap to Vivacity. On his inside Captain Piper a length and a quarter Brewery Boy on the inside of Gold Circle and then comes Veloso and tails right off adjust a dash and Tomashek nearing the corner 450 to go and Latin Saint in front by three quarters Nordic Prince a length third is Razor Sharp on the rail a length and a quarter Andretti and then Vivacity and a length the Brewery Boy has run a good race and then Captain Piper followed by Veloso to the outside into the straight Latin Saint shows the way a length on Nordic Prince Razor Sharp trying to get out behind them there's a run for him now if he's got a enough to take it. Johnston pulls the whip on Latin Saint. Razor Sharp's after him now, but Latin Saint is fighting on well. On the outside, Vivacity running home solidly, but Latin Saint's too good. And Latin Saint wins it a length and a quarter. Razor Sharp and Vivacity and Malcolm Johnston. Race six. This was the race for Hall the Greys and Holborn Court, who was the favourite at 13 to 8. It was a little too strong for them. It was a fair way back on the corner, but gee, he runs on really well over the final part, and he picks them up with about 100 metres to go, and then he uh, scoots away to win quite easily. Pretty sassy second, Glenhaven Grey third. And then glorious choice, and Offenbach's pride. On the swing around the corner, Glenhaven Grey and Heliotrope, and uh, trying to get between them now, pretty sassy. Four or five lengths to Holborn Court, and then glorious choice, and Offenbach's pride. Glenhaven Grey fighting back. Here's Holborn Court coming into it. Holborn Court on the outside, raced up to Glenhaven Grey, Pretty sassy at Heliotrope. Holborn Court heads them off. Quentin has in, having an armchair right on Holborn Court. And Holborn Court's beaten pretty sassy Glenhaven, Gray and Glorious Choice. And then Race 7 was won by Lord of Persia. He was trapped out three deep in the run to the first corner. So Robson let him stride to the front. He established a break of four or five lengths of the middle part of the race. And uh, he went to the line gamely to beat Exclusive Planet and conquer a third. And one river door into the straight and Lord of Persia still holds a lead of about four lengths on Exclusive Planet, followed by King Rip Conqueror, and then El Dufus and River Door at the 200 metres. Robson going to shake up this fellow now, Lord of Persia. Exclusive Planet is starting to close the gap, but he's under the whip. Lord of Persia's battling on too well. Conqueror running home down the outside, but Lord of Persia a heady ride by Robson, and Lord of Persia pretty well all the way. Lord of Persia. From exclusive planet, third conqueror than Alvaro. The final event of the day was won by Cargo, ridden by Ron Quinn. This is a pretty tidy performance by uh, Cargo. He was never on the track. He's out four and five horses wide coming to the corner. That's him with the black and the white star out on the extreme outside there. He gets to the line well to big convert and Latin Anvil third. Whips them in as they swing around the corner. Convert going up very wide out. He's taken the lead now from Winston Churchill, followed by Cargo, O'Black, and on the outside is Great Ambition. Imperial Rain trying to go up on the fence. Convert leads at the 200. Cargo's a half length away second. A length for Latin Anvil. Cargo coming after Convert. It's Cargo drawing level with Convert. Cargo doing better than Convert and Cargo gets up to win and what a run. Cargo has beaten Convert. Oh, he's destined never to win Convert. Third home Good tough effort there by Cargo, trapped as wide as he was. Okay, now the double and triple information from the meeting yesterday at Canterbury, winning combination 4-4 four, four and 8 Paris Gold, Latin Saint Lord of Persia. The double 43-45 of the triple the last time, Viv's choice. A little bit tied towards the end. Venite, the favourite, lunged at him right on the post, but just missed out. Viv's choice hanging on to beat Venite and Spindler third. And then Spindler. It's Viv's choice just in front again from Stone the Deck with Venite coming at them, coming to the last. Viv's choice drew away from Stone the Deck, led a length and a half. Vinite went up to be second and then a car as lad, but Viv's Choice has drawn clear onto the course proper. With 200 to go, he's two lengths in front of Vinite, starting to battle on well, followed by Spindler. But Viv's Choice in front with 100 to go. Vinite's trying very hard, he's lunging at him near the line. Viv's Choice in front as they get near the post, he's just going to win it. Viv's Choice won it ahead to Vinite. Six lengths away, third Spindler, followed by a car as The second race was won by one of the outsiders, top of the heather, starting at 20 to 1, beating Pleach. Pleach raced up pretty close to the lead most of the way, had every chance. Arctic Wolf ran on gamely at the end. The favourite was Sky Runner at 13 to 8. Top of the heather, but Pleach is moving up quickly on the outside to tackle them with Sky Runner. The two favourites coming at the leaders. Top of the heather took the lead. Pleach has grabbed it and linked away Sky Runner on the outside of them from Candle in the wind. However, Pleach is having a lot of trouble getting to top of the heather, is holding it at base. Sky Runner can't win, and top of the heather kicked away from Pleach. 
Top of the heather, a length and a half in front, and is going on to win. Pleach is going to run second. Arctic Wolf flashing home on the outside. We'll get up for third. Nearly second. Nearly a dead heat second, Arctic Wolf and Pleach. Then the third event, the winner here was Glen Sun beating Atchar and Nordica. Nordica was the favourite. Atchar showed a lot of speed. He went very fast in the early stages, tried to pinch it, but just couldn't hold off Glen Sun with Glen Sun cutting him down at the end. Now Gallant Spectre, touch a star next, and then came Shirley's path with Damien's lad. Para Parap is next. L.A. Bajou couldn't go the early pace. It's back about third last with Arlington Rocket and Sirotti last. Atchar cleared away as they start to come down the hill at the 800. Led three lengths to Mersey Star, a length to Glen Sun, one to Powers Hope. A length taking ways and touch a star together. Two lengths to Nordica and Politico. Two to buy now. Then Shirley's Path and Hoopla Hannah followed further back. Damien's Lad. Back behind it, Sky Castle and Para Parap and L.A. Bajou's dropped out to last. On the turn, 4.50 out and Atchar about four or five lengths in front of Mersey Star and Glenson together. Two or three lengths taking ways. Powers Hope and they were followed further back. Shirley's Path. L.A. Bajou still last. Atchar weakening, running off the track. Glenson trying to peg him back at the 200. Then Mersey Star. Nothing else can win. It's Atchar still in front with 150 to go. Glenson racing greenly, gradually getting to it now, though. Glenson raced up alongside Atchar, put its head in front, and Glenson's going on to win, although they're all tired. Glenson has scored a half length to Atchar. I think Nordic had just got third in front of... Uh... Want to run L.A. Bijou there, coming from last on the home turn, only a couple of lengths from the winner at the end. Race four, the winner was Evening Mist beating the dead heaters Lanessa and Zemazan Fair. In the straight, Max Indian going for a rails run where the leaders were Lanessa who's gone up on the outside to join Royal Proxy from Max Indian. Great Moon's going as well as them and moved up to join them from Lady Ice and then Evening Mist Society Man. It's Lanessa getting clear at the 200. Evening Mist and Society Man out after it. Evening Mist quickly running to Lanessa now. Took the lead, 100 out. And Evening Mist coming away to win it well. Lanessa second, Zemazan Fair got up for third. Fourth Society man out wider on the track. Race five, and the winner was Sweet and Fast beating the favourite Worry Symbol. Worry Symbol starting at 13 to 8. He was very heavily back, Worry Symbol. He runs on gamely at the end, but they never really looked like getting to uh, Sweet and Fast. Garda Mascot finishes third. The of that pack of horses with Regal Lord. Then Gian Sada behind them with Sweet and Fast and Caring Bush Private Talk. Ben Criado is well back near the rear, settling down with uh, Worry Symbol and also Amarant and last Gala Mascot. Pretty well bunched down the hill at the 700 now, and a good battle saw Gockwell on the outside taking this other one on, thank you, stars. And uh, they were going together as they came towards the 600-metre mark. Uh, just behind them over on the inside is Niagara and anyone home, and another one, Captain Adios, the outside. Worry symbol pulled out wide, starting to make ground with Caring Bush and Ben Criado at the rear. In the straight now, Gockwell and Captain Adios together from anyone home, hard ridden. Caring Bush out wider and Gala Mascot starting to run on well. Worry Symbols making ground on the outside quickly now. It's anyone home getting to the front from Sweet and Fast in the centre. Worry Symbol and Gala Mascot. Anyone home in front but Sweet and Fast grabs it near the line. Sweet and Fast took the lead and Sweet and Fast won it. A neck to Worry Symbol, a half length away third Gala Mascot. Anyway. Race six and the winner, Pachinelli. He's pretty good, uh, this fellow, Pachinelli. He drew wide, he got a long way back, had to travel wide on the corner, but he romps home at the end. That's him on the extreme outside with those uh, lightish colours on the uh, light coloured cap, the chestnut horse. still clear, however, here's Pochinella. It's coming home hard down the outside, blazing Surrett in front, but Pochinella's grabbed it now, and Pochinella's flying away from them in the run home. Uh, in second placing, Blazing Surrett with Noble Falcon and Scorpio Prince, but Pochinella has won by four lengths. Good battle for the Miners. Noble Falcon might have got second from Scorpio Prince, Blazing Surrett. Race 7, Belstani jumped to the lead at the start and showed plenty of pace led all the way and a little too good for the greatest. Rayana Year makes up good ground to finish third, conclusive the favourite at 2-1. to one. Next uh, on the outside is conclusive, giving them a big start. But with 300 to go on, Belstani about a length in front of Conclusive under the whip, in front of uh, the greatest under the whip, holding it at bay. Five lengths away, Conclusive inside the 200. Belstani hanging onto the lead, the greatest in second placing, but Belstani about three parts in front. And Belstani's going on to win it by about a long neck, I suppose. Uh, from on the outside, the greatest second. Rayonia flew home for third. They were followed. 
Race 8, and the winner here was Passive Tempo, finishing very quickly over the final stages. Right down the outside, inside straight, and Passive Tempo, single lap to fight it out at the end with Passive Tempo, just a little too good. Afeto, their favourite here at 7-4. to four. Inside straight on the outside has gone to the lead. Here's Passive Tempo coming with a big run wider out. It's coming at the leader quickly, and then special for Lou and Stookland. Inside straight, the leader, but Passer Tempo's ranged up through it with 100 to go. Inside straight, and Passer Tempo going together. Passer Tempo doing a little better, and Passer Tempo's coming on to win from last. Scores a half length to inside straight. About six lengths away third. Might have been Royal Crest in front of Special for Lou from Sagas. Last race of the day was won by Centricity beating Caramelise. Caramelise had come from last on the corner to loom up and go to the lead, but then Centricity fought back and Caramelise died on a run. Centricity just a little too good. Caramelise coming down the outside. It's Warnight in front, but Caramelise is picking it up quickly out wide. Casey Boy in the centre, but Caramelise dashed to the lead from Centricity with 100 to go and then Blue Prelate. Centricity battling back, Caramelise ahead in front. Centricity getting to it, Caramelise, Centricity. Centricity's done best. I think Centricity won at a short half head to Caramelise. Three or four links to Blue Prelate, probably third from... Uh, now the uh, double and treble information, 6117, Evening Miss, Page Chanana, Pass a Tempo, the double $76.95 and the treble $823.30. And the extra double at Sandown, 12 and 5, Sweet and Fast and Centricity. This is Lester Pickett's 4,000th win. Over his shoulder, a long searching look over his right shoulder. How does this end? Because Ardross has got this race by the scruff of its neck. Baffins in second, Easter Sun is third, but the crowd are rising to Ardross. Listen to the crowd cheering him as he strides away. What a way for Lester Bigot to ride his 4,000th winner. A great reception for a great horse and for a great jockey. It was Lester Pigott winning the free estates at Newbury. Leicester's 4,000th winner, and the horse was Ardross. Right, we'll be back with Wednesday, and this uh, good win by Grand Series. Grand Series shot away to be two lengths in front of Prince Firesong. He's going easily the leader. Macabre Moore a length away third and then Rumpus Room on the inside. Baker Man picking up ground. Then our Sierra Court further back. Lady Swan, Triton, Sun, Gold, Mayo and Aussie Echo last. Onto the home turn and Grand Series has dashed right away from them. He's four lengths in front of Prince Firesong as they flatten for the run in. Macabre Moore running third. Then our Sierra Court and Baker Man on the outside. But Grand Series is well clear. 250 metres to go. Prince Firesong battling on pretty well. Well, then Le Carbamore and Al Sierra Court. Grand Series in front. He's getting a little tired, but he's got a big break up his sleeve. Grand Series is clear. On the outside, Prince Fire Song and Al Sierra Court battling on well. But Grand Series has bolted in. He's right down close to home. Grand Series has won it from Al Sierra Court or Prince Fire Song. And switching from the Gold Coast to the meeting yesterday at Warwick Farm in Sydney. And of course, Kingston Town was the star, but the opening event was won by Manuan beating Captain Cadet, and third in was Castle Town. The favourite here, Racing Prince Tatnam. Handicap missing at a length and a half, Scorpio. Manuan on the outside, one of the best to begin. Quickly taken on and headed by Castle Town, and at the end of 200, it's Castle Town, a half Captain Cadet, a length away, Prince Tatnam, followed by Shahada, Manuan, Scorpio, Nordic Prince, and two lengths to Gaelic at the 800 metres, and the Novocastrian Castle Town in front by one length, travelling. Second, Captain Cadet. A length away, third, a horse off the fence, Prince Tatnam, which means Manuel on his outside is three deep. A length, Shahada on the inside of Scorpio, and three wide, the little chestnut, Nordic Prince, and two lengths to Gaelic. Homeward bound, 400 metres left to go, and Castletown being taken on by Manuan. A length away, third is Captain Cadet, one and a half to Prince Tatnam, pulling out four deep. Nordic Prince is five wide, and a length to Scorpio in the stretch, and Manuan on the outside's taken the lead now. Castletown a half length now. Now three quarters second, a link captain, cadet under the whip, and then comes Nordic Prince. It's Manuan ridden for dear life by Marnie, starting to sprint clear. A wall going for second and third, but it's an easy one for Manuan. Manuan from Captain Cadet on the fence, third castle town, wide out Prince Tatman. The second event was won by the favourite Claire Apollo. A very good ride too by Johnny Marshall from a wide alley. Clear Apollo gets over onto the rails in the early stages and then travels beautifully after that. Caviar Girl looked a little bit of a threat to her in the straight, but she held uh, Caviar Girl pretty easily over the final stages. Not far back as Court Ridgeling, Madame Maniot after my career, followed by Century Blaze, and then Sharani Miss, followed by Adios Bell, and then Larise on Clover next to last and two lengths to Ideal Note. They swing the first corner and run past the 950 and the leader, Clear Apollo. Nice piece of work by Marshall to get her from the outside across to the fence. She's taken on an 
one headed now by Courtridge. Going up wider out is Adios Bell, then further on the rail is Caviar Girl and a length after my career. A length and a quarter away next on Clover, then hope to come Larice behind them next, Madame Monet going through on the rail. Then Century Blaze from Shirani, miss and two lengths to ideal note. Past the 600 metres, again clear Apollo takes the lead, second three deep Adios Bell. Courtridge in the middle and on the fence is Caviar Girl and off the track next is after my career. Further looking for a run in company with Madame Monet and then hope to come and Shirani Miss has got two behind her. Around the corner and clear Apollo straightens for the run of the judge. A length and a quarter clear on Caviar Girl out after her. A length though after my career and behind those Adios Bell. Clear Apollo coming to the 150 leads a length and a quarter Caviar Girl and clear Apollo looking good for four straight. Clear Apollo safely holding Caviar Girl and clear Apollo wins again from Caviar Girl. Madame Monet, third and after my career, Shirani. The third event, the up and coming stakes, was won by the Golden Slipper winner, Masque. And it was a good win by Masque and a very good run by Cossack Prince. He was trapped out very wide, Cossack Prince, but he didn't shirk the task in the straight at all. He went to the line very well, and uh, he looks as though he's going to be a big chance in some of the uh, races coming up during the big carnivals in Sydney and Melbourne. Travelling fourth is Mars K and a length and a quarter off on the outside, Cossack Prince, and then Foreign Diplomat. Lucky Century is going through on the inside rail, and behind those kindly thought who's a fair way back, and Foreign Diplomat's now losing its position badly at the 800, where Hot Opera's burned through on the inside to lead Andretti a half Link, two to Mars K, three deep, Carrioy star the middle. Lucky Century, the rail over Cossack, Prince High Reserve, none Kiri, kindly thought and forget foreign diplomat. Coming along past the 550 at Hot Opera, showing brilliant speed, leads two lengths Andretti, a length for Mars K off the track as Cossack Prince in the middle, Carrioy star. On the rail is Lucky Century and behind those High Reserve and none Kiri from kindly thought. Into the straight, Hot Opera shows the way, he's a length and a half on Mars K, coming after him now. Andretti in third position and Cossack. Cossack Prince has run a big race. Hot Opera has thrown it in. Mars K's taken over. Endeavouring to match him. Cossack Prince. He's not quite doing it at the moment. Quentin pulls the whip on Mars K. He's holding Cossack Prince. Carry Oyster will get up for third. But it's a big win first up to Mars K. Mars K from Cossack Prince. Third Carry Oyster. Fourth Andretti. Now to the fourth event. The Silver Shadow stakes. And the winner here was Rosebrook. Starting at three to one. She's a very smart filly. And she scores well. Sunnivale finishes second. Food for Thought was third in this race. Rosebrook was Nicely placed coming to the home turn and gets to the line really well the last little bit. And a pretty good jump too. Sounds of morning near the outside. One of the best to begin. Antil came out speedily, followed by Regal Carrioy. Rosebrook is very prominently positioned this afternoon, followed closely by Vaindara. Dear Diane and Confessions are not all that far back, although Confessions is now losing its position from I Like Diamonds and Jade Lace. Lilac time dropping back worse than midfield over High Susie Bletcher's Pride. A length and a half away next is Son of Ale. Third last explicit Confessions, second last, and last is Sweet Classic. Coming towards the 600 metres and Regal Carrioy is just the leader here about a half length or so now Food for Thought's gone up three deep and Sounds of Morning splitting the leaders a length and a half to Rosebrook inside Vandara one dear Diane one Antel and then I Like Diamonds followed by Jade Lace Son of Ale, and then Bletcher's Pride Lilac Time and Explicit Heads the others from Confessions around the corner and Food for Thought three deep takes an arrow lead from Sounds of Morning and Regal Carrioy Rosebrook is coming into the picture solidly now followed by Vandara who's labouring Food for Thought taken on by Rosebrook. It looks a match in two of those. Son of Ale's running home. Rosebrook now takes over from Food for Thought. Son of Ale in third place, but it's all Rosebrook. And Rosebrook makes it four successive wins here on the track. A great filly. Rosebrook has beaten the fast finishing Son of Ale. Third Food for Thought and Bletcher's Pride. Good well, you'd run the second horse there, Son of Ale, making up plenty of ground over the final part. Now to the Spring Cup. The winner was in luck, taken to the lead by De Montfort in the early stages of the race, and he travelled kindly out in front, and he held them at bay pretty easily over the final stages, winning the race from Oz Meridian, Red Nose finishes third, and Pagma Mahal was the favourite, and six to four. Long Jetty followed two back by Peninsula, second last is Ellipse, and a length and a half to Rural Kingdom. Coming onto the Georges Riverside and passing the 800, it's in luck a length on Oz Meridian, under orders third, a length the Red Nose, and Quinton's got Duckett on Pagma Mahal, firmly snookered, nearly two lengths away next is Long Jetty, two and a half Peninsula, second last Ellipse and two to Rural Kingdom.
traveling to the bend. They have 500 meters left to gallop, and the pilot is in luck. A half length of Meridium. Red Nose being asked to go now, followed by under orders. Pagma Mahal about to be hooked away from the rail. And as they straighten up for the run of the judge, it's in luck kicking. He's about a length clear on Os Meridium. Red Nose in third position, followed by Pagma Mahal at the 150. In luck's giving plenty of cheek. He's about a half length on Os Meridium. Red Nose can't reach the two leaders. Neither can Pagma Mahal. But it's in luck in front. Os Meridium, Red Nose and Pagma Mahal can't do any better. And in luck leads from barrier to box to win the Spring Cup. It's a good effort by in luck to beat Os Meridium, Red Nose. Third and fourth in was Pagma Mahal. Race six to Warwick Stakes and the winner was Kingston Town making a successful comeback. Kingston Town. He begins well and then races outside the leader to the home turn. Johnson shot him to the front as they straightened up. Rare four made up plenty of ground over the final stages, but he couldn't pick up Kingston Town. Here's the replay. Kingston Town jumped well. Actually, Zara Royal best to begin. Domino second. Kingston Town third and moving up. Note of victory, followed by Shiraco, rare form. Then Port Carling, My Saravon, followed by Lady Euler and Gurners Lane had dropped out to last. As they travel towards the first corner at the 1,000 metres and Note of victory leads the way. Kingston Town is stable, mate, sitting three quarters of a length second, a length of Zara Royal, followed by Domino the rail. One Shiraco three quarters back on the fence as they swing to the riverside rare form who blundered by G Hardwick did a good job to stay aboard a length and a quarter to my Sarave on Gurners Lane Lady Eula and Port Carling whips them in down by the 800 metres and note of victory in front Kingston Town second he's only a half length from his stable mate a length and a quarter away third is Shiraco moving up quickly followed closely by Zara Royal Domino then my Sarave on rare form over Gurners Lane Lady Eula second last and two and a half to Port Carling as they swing Swing the corner in the Warwick Stakes and Johnston pops the question to the champ. Kingston Town draws level with note of victory. Shiraco a half length away on the outside. Making a real race of it with Kingston Town is Shiraco. Into the straight Kingston Town. The inside shaken up. A half length Shiraco. A length Zara Royal. One rear form running an enormous race. But Kingston Town has accelerated. Kingston Town a length and a half. Rear form running home well. Kingston Town still in front. Rear form won't quite get him. And the King's back to his best. Kingston Town from rear form, who ran a fantastic race. He almost fell coming to the side. Zara Royal third, Shiraco just weakened in the... Race seven, and the winner was Noble Bar, ridden by Jack Thompson, standing at 33 to 1, beating Purple Edition. And third was Neard. Reflect was the unplaced favourite in this race, starting at 7 to 4. Uh, Noble Bar was a long way back early, but uh, finishes very quickly over the final stages and goes on to score well. Half length on the Hobart Cup when a powerful prince. Exclusive planner trapped off the track in third position, a length the Lord Avon. In the centre, Reflect being given every chance. 3D Purple Edition, a length the Royal Captive, followed by Bourbon Boy. One then coming near, no score off the track, and Noble Bar on the rail. Favoloso losing ground. Two to Cappy and ahead to Royal Sonata. They're homeward bound in the welter and Johnston had driven powerful Prince to the leaders galloping Gourmet's given up at around the corner it's powerful Prince making play three quarters exclusive planted reflect held up in a pocket on the inside of purple edition and Noble Bower pulling to the outside at the 200 exclusive planet joins powerful Prince reflect trying to get between them then purple edition Noble Bower on the outside and then comes Neard here's a race Noble Bower driven to the lead by the professor Jack Thompson the New Zealander Noble Bower is coming Coming away, and Noble Bower has won from Purple Edition. Very close, neared and powerful Prince for third from Reflect, not getting... The final event of the day, and the winner was Noble Connection beating the short price favourite Lance Lotto. It was a big street corner tip, Lance Lotto. Uh, he raced uh, up in the lead, or near the lead, to the home turn. Looked as though he'd score as they straightened up, but then he had no answer for uh, Noble Connection, who got off the fence and quickly loomed up to Lance Lotto and went away to win it easily. Prince followed by Califf. Mirror images over on the inside of Seeker Aaron. See next to last, and Ray John whips them in about nine lengths from the leader. On the side of the track, linking up with the 650, and the pilot is Lone Eagle, a half length on the favourite Lance Lotto, making a line of three as Steel Eye Sam. In fourth position, Noble Connection on the inside of Prince Dimitri, and one first the back Neptune's caught. Seeker on the outside over Never in Califf and then Mirror Image here in the sea and Rage on the tail ender as they turn for home in the last. Lance Lotto after Lone Eagle. Lone Eagle a half. Lance Lotto a length and a half. Noble Connection out and then a gap steal I Sam followed by Neptune's caught but Noble Connection sprinted up quickly. He's headed them off and Noble Connection is racing clear from Lance Lotto. Lone Eagle Neptune's caught finishing fast down the outside but too late Noble Connection's blitzing its rivals. Noble connection from Lance Lotto. Neptune's caught third, fourth never in, fifth loading. Right, now let's check out the TAB information for the meeting yesterday at Warwick Farm in Sydney. Winning combination, six, two and three. 
as Rosebrook, Inluck and Noble Bower. The double paid $96.45 and the treble paid $1,040.80. That was Warwick Farm. After the first event, the hurdle, and the winner here was Rhythmic beating Sands Pride. And third in the race was Gentle Duke. DeLago was the favourite, starting at 3-1. Then two lengths to DeLago, who's jumping badly and dropping out now. Then Tonga Taboo, followed by Run Big, but a race in two on the turn. Rhythmic, Rhythmic still going well, led by a half length to Sands Pride. Two or three to Gentle Duke under the whip, then four away to DeLago and Tonga Taboo. One jump to go near the turn, and Rhythmic got away by a length on Sands Pride. Two lengths further back, Gentle Duke, then Tonga Taboo. Straight up for the run home it's rhythmic in front sands pride's battling on they approach the last he eases rhythmic to it got over it safely and kicked away and rhythmic's going to lead all the way rhythmic came away to win by almost three lengths to sands pride gentle duke got third in front of chogga taboo manitoba then a gap to delay the second event and the winner here was honey behold the big disappointment was the short price favorite velvet rocket raced up into second and third place Why coming down velvet the side but uh, well. was under it's pressure about 600 meters from home and beaten a long way out honey behold beating the early pacemaker bold, bold sensation and kairu kindy third tap shoes up there and velvet rocket going up along the inside miss miss ailsa in that bunch with kairu kylie two lengths rose of harwa on the outside of swinging jezebel a length and a half further back more rain delicado key making ground but deep and further back gleam and glitter who can't keep up with them from fair street trail last of all past the 600 bowl sensation led by a length to honey behold and velvet rocket third on the rails two links away miss ailsa followed by kairu kylie rose of how are out deep and struggling and further back is tap shoes near the turn bowl sensation going well led by three quarters honey behold two links to velvet rocket is not traveling well at the moment and further back kairu kylie and tap shoes in the straight honey behold moved up on the outside of bowl sensation to take the lead they're three in front of velvet rocket and honey behold starting to come away with 100 meters to go Honey Behold moved away to win by about a length and a half to Bowl Sensation. Good go for third. Kairu Kylie got there just in front of Moore Rain, who made up a heap of ground. Then tap The third event and the winner here was Suggester. Suggester and Newtown Desire vied for the lead at the early stages of the race and they battled it out over the final part with the honours going to Suggester. Sound like Bell was the favourite and finishes really third. I thought a good run by Taj Bell, obviously. She's looking for more ground now, but uh, runs on gamely to finish up in fourth spot. Showing plenty of pace and so like Bell driving up along the fence. Just in behind them, Suggester is up there early, followed further back by Indiander. Taj Bell can't go with them early next on the rails, followed by Plush Finish, Champ and Wise. Back along the rails is Selkie, then further back Sankar. Well-dressed third last around the first turn or just in front of it they'll join in the chorus and miss mentor last of all 600 to go down the side newtown desire on the inside and suggested together by two lengths to so like bell traveling well third a half length yarrow rose further back indiander followed by taj bell a couple into plush finish followed further back by selkie and sankar near the home turn newtown desire led by nectar suggester a length and a half to so like bell about to pounce on them and two lengths to taj bell in the straight it suggests to the outside newtown desire finding plenty and so like bell running on taj bell going to the fence, Suggester put its head in front. They're having a bumping duel at Newtown Desire. Suggester just in front of Newtown Desire. Suggester got the money. One by a head for Newtown Desire. Third home, so like Bell. Then Taj Bell. The next race of the winner here was Magic King, finishing brilliantly over the final stages. Those who had backed the favourite Happy Road were counting the bickies halfway down the straight when he was well clear. But uh, in the last little bit, Magic King was able to pick him up and score narrowly. Third home was Ari right Lad, the second horse, the favourite at 7-4, to four, well Happy Road. Here's the replay. Bare fists and Bow Radiant were both slow. Happy Road, one of the best out with powerful gold and showing plenty of paces. Smart dash over near the inside. Just behind them when they, when they settle is uh, Court Hugh with check the deck over on the fence. Back uh, midfield is Ari Lad on the rails, followed by Ripper's Dream. Magic King in that bunch, further back, Bow Radiant. Then McCready on the inside, two lengths paint the stars, followed further back by Sumerai and three away to Bear Fists. Racing down the side at the 700, it's Happy Road on the inside and Powerful Gold the outside by three lengths to Smart Dash. A length, check the deck, followed further back by Court Hugh. Ari Lad badly pocketed, followed further back by Ripper's Dream making ground. Then Magic King looking for a run and further back, Bow Radiant, followed further back in the field then by McCready and paint the stars near the turn happy road got away led by a length on powerful gold who's struggling smart dash getting up along the fence and further back check the deck running on followed further back on the field by re lad but happy road scooted away on the turn led two lengths to smart dash followed by check the deck re lad and down the outside magic king happy road in front with 100 to go check the decks running on strongly and right down the outside magic king happy road stopping magic king picking it up with every stride it's going to get up i think it has on the outside magic king got up to beat happy road Third tight between Ari Ladd and Check the Deck. Just behind the... That was a good win there by uh, Magic King. That's the horse that went it up here in Brisbane with Angus Harmonasco. Now to the big one of the day, the freeway stakes and the great win by Manicato. 
He uh, was under pressure in the early stages to lead, and then they took him on in the middle part. He was headed on the corner, looked as though he was in trouble, but as all champions do, he fought back, regained the lead, and won in a photo. Manicato, Segovian rhythm, Corbeau all in a line when they settle down. Now Manicato starting to show out, but he's been pressured to get to the lead. Manicato led by three quarters, Corbeau, Segovian rhythm, and Common Star. Boljet just behind them from Count Ajax, Soldier of Fortune and Cobra. Out deeper, Bold Prospect, followed by Fearless Pride, and further back is Bin Binga. Well back is Spectrum, and Lawman back second last when they settle down and come past the 600 with Silver Bounty. Manicato led with just over 500 to go from Segovian Rhythm. A length to Boljet, travelling well third, then Bold Prospect making ground. A length away, Quabo on the rails, followed by Cobra, Fearless Pride deep. Further back in the field then was Common Star, losing ground from Count Ajax. Lawman starting to make ground, but about 10 off the lead near the turn. Segovian Rhythm moved up on the outside to join Manicato and in fact it put its head in front of Manicato. A length and a half, Quabo getting clear, followed by Bold Prospect and Lawman's running on around the home turn. Segovian Rhythm on the outside and Manicato the fence. Quabo running on, Manicato fighting back. It's put its head in front again. Segovian Rhythm trying to get to it and here's Quabo and Lawman flying. Manicato still in front of Quabo and Manicato. Manicato by net Quabo. Lawman out wide might have got third. Then Segovian Rhythm... It was a great fighting effort. He had to pull out all stops there, Manicato. And he did look a little bit big too, didn't he? Here's an interview now with the uh, winning jockey, Gary Willits. Your reaction, Gary, to the roar that went up here at Mooney Valley when number one, Manicato, saddle cloth number went into the frame. Well, um, I knew he'd won, Keith. <laughs> I, wasn't, I didn't have to actually wait. I was a fair way when the number went up. But uh, as I say, the uh, crowd's reaction to a champion was just amazing. It's amazing, Gary, that Manicato is a seven-year-old. He's just come back, well, you know, that was his best run, probably. Well, he's come back. Uh, I feel this time, and I think I told you the other night when I was talking to you, working the horse, uh, like I've ridden him now since he was more or less broken in, and uh, I know the horse himself. He's very happy in himself, and, uh, you know, if we can keep him like that, well, the crowd will see him going around for, a, you know, a few more real good wins, I would think.